Welcome to the Mediterranean Deep Stack in Slovenia. Welcome to the beautiful resort of Potroz in Slovenia, where D4 Events and Casino Potroz play host to the second Mediterranean Deep Stack Poker Championship. Nestled in between Croatia and Italy, and along the coast of the Adriatic Sea, Potroz is the perfect place for a poker tournament. When not playing poker, there are many fine restaurants and bars to while away the hours, partaking of great food and drink at reasonable prices. Don't forget your sun cream though, as the sun here is nearly always shining. Poker is relatively new here in Portoroz. In fact, the new 200 seat poker room's first tournament was the first Mediterranean Deep Stack Poker Championship, held in November 2010, which was won by Englishman Matt Myford. This year, the number of players attending the event has doubled, with over 90% of the players travelling from abroad. Getting here is easy and the casino provides free shuttles for poker players from Trieste and Ljubljana airports and from Venice it's only 10 euros each way. Most of the players are staying in the 5 star Metropole Hotel which is right next door to the casino and only a few minutes stroll to the beachfront. D4 events were able to get a fantastic rate of 100 euros a night for two people including breakfast and dinner. For those on a smaller budget, luxury apartments for up to four people were available at the marina for only 120 euros a night. 150 players have paid the 550 euro entry fee and sat down in front of the massive 50,000 starting stack. Amongst them were previous D4 events champions Magnus Naslin and Amy Trodd, and last year's defending champion Matt Myford. The field is mixed, with some players playing their first big live events, while others like Paul Jackson and Carl Marinholz are seasoned professional players with many big live caches under their belts. Also in the field is D4 Events' very own Brian Lannan. This will be Brian's first time playing the structure he helped create. We move into day two now, and after 10 levels of play on each of the two starting days, we have 85 players left out of the 150 players that started the tournament. Chip leader is young Belgian poker player Wesley Nobles. Snapping at his heels is Peter Mulbeck from Austria and Dane Benjamin Lucassen. Also in the top 10 are Irishman Patrick Tully with Paul Jackson who came third last year in ninth place. Portorage is not just about the poker as we found out when the fashion show started up in the hotel lobby after dinner one day. Those players unlucky enough to have busted out found that the gods were back on their side as they watched scantily clad models parading down the catwalk. As day two continues, players start to get eliminated. We say goodbye to Christopher Vendel, who is playing for the second year winning his package on Poker Encore both times. We also say goodbye to Tony Anderson from Sweden, who travelled with a group of eight players including Magnus Naslin, winner of the European Deep Stack in Dublin. Also out is winner of the 200 side event in Dublin, Olivier Beaton. As day two nears the end, the money bubble approaches. D4 events Brian Lannan is still in the mix, but finds himself in bad shape when his ace-10 is unable to outrace the pocket nines of his opponent. Soon after, he gets his short stack in, but is unable to double up, and he's the unlucky bubble in this first deep stack event. All the remaining players are now guaranteed a prize of at least €1,000, with the winner set to receive a whopping €20,000. Not bad for a few days' work. Hello, I two over cards. That's, that's poker. <laughs> After Brian's exit, play continues, until six more players bust out to leave us with this last nine for our final table. After Wesley takes down the first pot with a raise to 40,000, it's Anthony Rodriguez's turn to open the betting with a raise to 45,000 from the button. The blinds are 10,000 and 20,000 with a 1,000 ante, and everyone else folds to Raf de Weaver in the big blind. Raf makes a re raise to 114,000, and this results in a four bet to 325,000 from Anthony, followed by an insta shove for Raf for 654,000. Anthony is pot committed to call with his pocket twos and finds himself in a classic race situation against the ace king of Raf. An ace on the flop seals the big double up for Raf for 1,326,000. A few
few hands later and Anthony again raises to 45,000, this time from early position. He's called by Peter Muhlbeck and Wes Nobles in the blinds. Anthony continuation bets the flop, which is ace of hearts, three of diamonds and eight of clubs. This prompts a fold from Peter, but Wesley calls. The turn is the ace of clubs and both players check. The pot is just over 300,000 and a bet of 400,000 from Wesley on the river, which is nine of spades, wins the pot. With the blinds now 12,000 and 24,000 and a 2,000 ante, Johan makes a button raise to 55,000. In the big blind, Tony moves all in for 444,000. Tony's in good shape when Johan makes the call, his ace-queen a big favourite against the ace-jack of Johan. The flop comes down and it's seven of spades, king of hearts and nine of diamonds. And Tony's still in front, Johan needs a jack or a running straight to win. The turn is the seven of hearts, which brings some split pot options for Johan. Unfortunately for the valiant Swede, the river is an ugly jack, which means he's our ninth place finisher, taking home one. 1,650 euros. Congratulations, Tony. Peter Veal from Brighton, England is our eighth place finisher. Peter busts out when his King 10 fails to improve against Wesley Noble's Ace 8 in a pre flop all in encounter. Two hands after Peter's exit, it was Anthony Falvey's turn to get all his chips in the middle, looking for a double up. This was the cork man's first trip outside of Ireland for poker, and he got his chips in ahead, calling Anthony Rodriguez three bet all in. Both players were in the blind, and Irish Anthony's ace jack was well ahead of his Belgium namesake's queen jack. The flop was a harmless ten of hearts, two of clubs, two of hearts, but the turn gave the Belgian more hope the eight of hearts, putting three hearts on the board to go with the jack of hearts in his hand. For the second time at the final table, the worst hand pre-flop prevailed when the ace of hearts hit the river, giving Anthony Falve a pair, but completing Anthony Rodriguez's flush. Anthony goes back to court, 2,800 euros richer. A sweet return as he won his package in the Macau Club in Cork. At the break here we can see the chip counts with Wesley in the lead, 2,205,000, closely followed by Anthony. Raf follows on behind with 1,275,000 and Johan there with 978,000 chips. Both Olivier and Peter lag behind them with just over 500,000 chips. A few hands after the restart, and with the blinds now 15,000 and 30,000 with a 3,000 ante, the action really picks up the pace. First Olivier moves all in with 374,000. Olivier's ace nine is looked up by Johan, who's in the big blind with ace queen. No help for Olivier, and he's our sixth place finisher, winning 4,000 euros. Johan's new chips don't stay with him for very long. The very next hand, Wesley Nobles takes him out. They get all the money in on the turn, with the board reading seven of hearts, two of hearts, two of spades and two of clubs. Wesley's pocket kings, leaving Johan looking for one of two eights left in the deck to stay in the tournament. Johan fails to hit his Miracle River and leaves with fifth place prize of 5,500 euros. It's the very next hand that Peter Mulbeck goes out in fourth place for the 7,500 euro prize. Peter's pocket eights lose a race against the king nine of Rafter Weaver.
Here we see the chip counts of three-handed play starts. Wesley with 3,860,000, Anthony with 2,123,000 and Raf on behind with 1,534,000 chips. Three players left, a deal is discussed and initially refused by Raf. It's soon revisited, however. The Harris are thinking of doing the deal, so we're just doing the figures to see if it's going to work out. A deal is agreed with 17,900 to the winner and 13,000 to second and third place. The three players battle on for over 30 hands, with Raf de Weaver winning the biggest pot when his King Jack makes a straight on the turn of a 6 10 King 9 board. Wesley Nobles calls a 445,000 bet on the river, only to muck when Raf shows the nuts. This pot was over 1,700,000. Finally, there's a big pre-flop confrontation between Wesley and Anthony. Wesley raises from the button, Anthony three bets from the small blind, and Raf gets out the way. Wesley four bets, and Anthony five bets all in. A call from Wesley, and Anthony's in bad shape. His pocket three is well behind the jacks of Wesley. There's no help on the board, and Anthony is out in third for 13,000 euros, leaving Wesley Nobles and Rafter Weaver to fight it out, heads up for the title. There's a full level of small ball poker, with Wesley Nobles gradually chipping away at Rafter Weaver's stack. By the time the blinds go up to 25,000, 50,000, Wesley's increased his lead. He is over 6 million of the 7.5 million chips in play. After four walks in a row, the two Belgian finalists finally get into a pre-flop all-in. Wesley's ace-queen is looking good to clinch the title, as Raf is dominated, holding ace-nine. However, the flop contained the nines to give Raf a much needed double up to 2.8 million chips. Four hands later, Raf makes it 115,000 from the button, and Wesley three bets to 282,000. Raf makes the call. And the flop is jack of spades, seven of diamonds, king of diamonds. Wesley makes it 317,000. Which is called by Raf. Wesley checks the turn, which is the jack of hearts. Raf bets 485,000. Wesley moves all in and Raf makes a call, only to see that the turn was a cooler, giving him trip jacks, but makes Wesley a full house as he has pocket sevens. This means Wesley Nobles becomes our Mediterranean deep stack poker champion. Wesley Nobles, Mediterranean deep stack champion. How does it feel? This is sick. This is so crazy. Uh, I feel fed up. This is crazy. Yeah? I heard you didn't get much sleep last night. I think three hours. Three hours sleep. So you're pretty tired today. I'm not tired. No? I don't think you feel tired anymore. You're not going to get I much was sleep tired. tonight. I yeah. was tired the whole day, but I'm not tired <laughs> anymore now. Excellent. Talk us through your last hand. Um, last hand I was... Um, he opened the button, I threw it with pocket sevens. Mm -hmm. He calls a uh, flop with king jack seven. I, I think you flop a set every time you have sevens. Yeah. <laughs> I think I had like four times seven, I flop four times a set. It's yeah. so sick. Um, I bet he flat 
and the turn is the best card in the, in, in the deck, it's like another jack, and I'll make a full eyes on the turn. And I think we have a lot of jacks in this range, and I check. He bet like one turn to his deck, I pushed him in like 20 seconds he called King Jack. And the river was not a king or a jack, and that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you get paid, so how much do you win? Um, we made the deal, it was um, 17,900 Yeah? Have you thought of any more plans? You told me earlier on you're going to spend the money uh, putting into any more tournaments. I presume more D4 events tournaments. Yeah, it's sick. I have now four caches in my life. And yeah. yeah. I started playing a live poker like uh, last year. Mm -hmm. I started with in Dublin. Yeah. I cashed on the, the satellite. I, I didn't cash the, the side events, I just cashed uh, the satellite. And then I play like one tournament in Belgium. I don't have to cash. Then I come to. Uh, Dublin this year, I cash the main event, I cash the side event of 3 out of 0. Then I go to uh, another event, I don't cash, and uh, this is my like my sixth. And all of the caches are T4 events, it's so sick. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, Wesley, I'm sure you're looking forward to uh, getting to the bar maybe and celebrating? Yeah. Yeah? Probably we're gonna do that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, then well, I'll let you go. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll see you at the bar. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. So, another one all over. I'm here with the D4 boys, Brian, the Bubble, Lannan, and Mike Lacey. How, How do you think it's gone, Brian? Uh, the event went very well, actually. I played it. It was the first one I played. Um, great fun. Um, there was good banter at all the tables. Obviously very disappointed to Bubble, and uh, I know you're not going to let me forget about it either. But... Um, I don't think many people will, Brian, I'm not the only one. <laughs> but uh, with regard to the event, it was brilliant. Um, we doubled up on our last event here, uh, numbers-wise. Um, I think people have really got a feel for the venue now and all that, so in the f it looks very good for the future. So yeah. you it's definitely going to be an annual year. event. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. I mean, I've heard, I mean, from what I've heard walking around the floor, I think that there's a lot of interest from people, and certainly people are coming back next year. I think that they're anticipating bringing people with them. You know, it's going to be a, a bigger, better event. Absolutely, and uh, people are looking at it um, not just as the poker, but as a whole vacation. Right. So, uh, like, there's a lot of guys here this week who've come for the full week. Um, I can see a lot more of that for next year because uh, outside of the, the poker, like <laughs> you only have to look behind us, like it's fabulous. Um, and then all the the hotels, the spa treatments, the food, the beer, the roulette—it's great. <laughs> <laughs> roulette. <laughs> Plenty of hour was wild away in the evenings on the roulette table. Absolutely, absolutely. I didn't fare so well. Uh, absolutely, but all great fun and. Everybody had a good time, and sure, at the end of the day, that's what, what it's all about. Absolutely, I had an awesome time. Certainly on the roulette table, Mike, you uh, you did pretty well last night. I heard a massive cheer from your corner. Yeah, it was. Uh, it went well through the week. It all went a bit peak tong towards the end of last <laughs> night, but uh, uh, some lessons from Mr. Twaddle from Red Hot Poker paid off, and 30 got me out of it in the end. So <laughs> it's a happy trip. Uh, sad to leave. Just had the last grapefruit beer of the trip. Uh, last bit of nice food back to England not looking forward to going home really I wish I was staying here for another week or two what'd you say boys let's book another week out yeah well I think I'm like a lot of the players that have come out here this week there's at least half a dozen of them have come up and asked me how they can book to come back during the summer with their friends and family just for a holiday and I think I'm going to come out for a bit of a relax later in the year if possible yeah Brian got quizzed last night I heard you getting quizzed uh from players' wives about booking Belgium. We, maybe we should start yeah. a travel agency I, going I, I, here. I think, um, I think they actually thought we were a travel agency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they wanted to book the venues and not the poker, so <laughs> don't yeah. be surprised now if you see D4 <laughs> travel arrive. <laughs> Coming soon, guys. You've heard it here first. Well, I think it's time for us to go. Say goodbye to Slovenia. Yeah, back next year. To Slovenia back next year. We're looking forward to our next event, which is in uh, the beautiful town of Namur in Belgium. Last year we had over 500 players played the event. There was another 200 trying to play, but we just didn't have space to accommodate them. So if anybody wants to come and play that event, they want to get online and uh, register with us soon because it is sure to sell out. I mean, you can just tell by the amount of Belgian and French players that came down here. They love to play poker. So once we have this event in their, their hometown, then, then it's going to be full. So we're looking forward to that. Then 
after that we're back in back in England for the Goliath in conjunction with Grosvenor Casinos. That's a bit of a unique tournament there. We're probably going to get over 1,500 players for a £100 tournament, £100,000 guarantee. This and is an amateur tor tournament, isn't it? Yeah, it's, weird. it's the amateur deep stack. Um, it's a brilliant structure for £100. There's no way you're going to get a better structure than that. It's 25,000 chips. Uh, it's a three-day event, and it's it's held in the unique venue of the Rico Arena where Coventry City play football in the Eon Lounge there overlooking the pitch. It's, it's going to be a, an event not to be missed by any poker enthusiast, and it fits pretty much any poker player's budget, so that's a good one to look out for. And for the UK players, it's it's a good couple of months for them because we're in the Broadway Casino just after that for another deep stack. So. Ah, it's a nice casino. I've been, I've been to that one. It's good. So yeah, no, it's it's sad to leave here, but we've a lot to look forward to throughout the year. Um, and also in September, we're back in Dublin in the Ballsbridge Inn for the European Shorthanded Poker Championship. That's going to be an amazing event. We've got expected three to four hundred qualifiers from Winamax plus the regular players buying in. It's going to be the biggest six max event that Europe's ever seen. Um, so we've got so much to look forward to, but sad to leave. Sad to leave indeed. Any final words, Brian? Uh, no, just looking forward to the, the, the events ahead now. Um, mm. As we said, this one's over. It's, uh, we'll be back next May. Um, Registration for the Belgian tournament is now uh, open on the website, uh, I, I see. Uh, so. Yeah, actually, uh, all events are open for registration. So uh, if anybody wants to get online, do us, d4events.com. Excellent. Well, this is uh, Gary the Hat Jarman signing off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next year.